Who's talking about that? No, I need to get that Chinese. I can't lie. I'm going to have some conversations. <laughs> yeah, no, man, stop. The man then. What's up, Nimbroski? How are you, bro? Good. Yeah, good to see you, man. Yeah, man, man, thank you. Hey, bro, man was watching your um, YouTube channel the other day, so talk to us about that. You been watching King of Kong? Yeah, King of Kong. You been enjoying it? Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's been, it's been like a long time coming. Obviously, we had... Um, Ben Foster at the club last year, he managed to like capture everything at the promotion mm -hmm. and uh, really took off. Like I was watching it even when I got home from training and then he was like, Will, you need to take the GoPro to Nigeria, man, give it a go. And I was a bit hesitant at first, but took it. First episode went live, I think everybody loved it. You know, we've got some great characters in the team, we've got a lot of sauce in that team. So obviously, um, yeah, it's been, it's been really, really uh, big hit so far. And uh, yeah, loads of different people. Like we've got Ronaldo, my driver, not Cristiano. <laughs> but <he's, laughs> he bases himself on Cristiano. He says he's the Ronaldo of the road, the best driver in Nigeria. And uh, yeah, loads of good people, good energy. And I just wanted to like capture it because I thought, you know, not a lot of people see what it's like being an international football player and stuff like that. And people ask me all the time, what's it like in Nigeria? What's it like when you play Zambia away in Tanzania? All these kind of places, Sierra Leone, all the places that we go to because like, yeah, it's, it's always an experience. I just wanted to like, show that and uh, capture as much as I can. So that's what I've been doing. So that's what King of Kong has like, kind of been birthed from that. It's definitely needed, but where did um, King of Kong come from? You know, one of the physios kept on calling me King of Kong. So then I kind of just ran with that. And then Ben as well, he said, like, when we were thinking about the channel name, he said King of Kong. And I was like, yeah, no, that has to be it. So uh, yeah, it's kind of play on words King Kong, but then obviously it worked out well. So we, we're happy with it. Six, six, so anyone watching this, make sure you watch the King of Kong YouTube channel. I'll feature on there soon when Chelsea yeah, play at that. <laughs> <laughs> Nice one, brother. Just now, man, I was cold in it. <laughs> I was feeling I that, you shaking know. a leg and that. Yeah. Yeah. Was like, wait, wait, cool. Who would you say like the worst dance? Oh, here we go. Dance was, like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you can't even say that because you didn't. Nah, I, I can't say anything. Dance. Yeah. I can't so, dance. I can't how do you know? I just don't want to dance. I didn't yeah, want to no, flex no, no. I'm saying off oh, of what show you. I'm saying life. off of what you see. What I just saw there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you I, know. I didn't want to show them up. I didn't want to show them up. Yeah, no, no. I trust you in it, so... Um... <laughs> See, I don't want to show you up, man. Yeah, we're going to get another chance for that. <laughs> we're get another chance. Anyway, how have you been? How yeah, you been? good, brother. Yeah, good, good. Happy to be here today and be part of the show. I've been watching you guys, so I like to be here finally myself. I'm happy about that. Oh, that's, that's sick. Big, that's sick, man. Make sure you've been watching it, man. Been so in terms of, like, your, your journey, everyone always feel like everyone's got their own unique journey. How would you describe yours? Oof. Um... <coughs> I feel like mine has been um, probably be the longest way around to get back to where I wanted to be. So uh, I felt uh, where I'm now being back in England and obviously now this season playing in Premier League is like a moment of full circle for me. Uh, but it's been a, it's a long, long, long way around. I've played in many countries. So like, my football journey has been amazing because I managed to experience loads of things that I probably would never have done if I didn't play football. Um, so yeah, and no, I just enjoyable and I'm grateful that I managed to go through all those things because it mm -hmm. also makes me appreciate a lot of like being back here now and, and doing what I'm doing. So, you yeah, good. You know what's so sick about the journey, yeah, is because um, I was travelling to a game with my teammate, Jack Munns. Yeah. The third one's in it. So, he was talking, he loves football, always talking football. And um, talking, talking, and he's like, yeah, um, talking about his youth team. And he's like, oh, he's still playing for my youth team. And it was like, yeah, William Truce. And I was in the car and I was like, oh, is it? Yeah, was in your youth team, like, kind of thing, isn't it? So, like, I'll be honest with you, at that point, I didn't even know that you started playing football in, in England from yeah. young and then 
you navigate your way around um, Europe, playing football in Europe and whatnot, and then you now it's full circle. Like it's it's crazy because, yeah, because he, he's the one that brought it to brought it to light. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then obviously that Jack Mans, he was at the time in our youth team was one of the best players, mm. and uh, I th obviously I think a lot of people don't know me from my time before in England because I never really made waves. Mm -hmm. I was there. I was I got picked up really late as a schoolboy. Um, I think I was 15 and, and Jack could probably be in that, I think he was at West Ham before, if I'm mm. not wrong, and then he was at Spurs from a young age. Mm. So a lot of the boys already had like a name, because you know, in, in academy yeah. football, it's yeah. a small world, you kind of know who the talents are. Mm. And, and I wasn't part of that, so I was a late comer. And then also, yeah, I never made, you know, my first team debut or really like made a lot of reserve team appearances when people might start to notice you. So mm. uh, my, my first stint in England, yeah, it was probably without any real name. So there'll only be people that, that yeah. obviously you meet in football because it's a yeah. small world yeah. that might know me from the time before, but I definitely wasn't a, a well-known name in, in, in like among people that followed football at the time, yeah. Yeah, and was the plan, you mentioned Full Circle, was the plan to always end up back in the Prem? <coughs> no matter where you went, was it always, all right, cool, I'm going to go here, I'm going to but it's going to lead me back? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily plan, it was a dream, that's what I'd say, because I think obviously when you get released at, at 19, when like I did, mm. uh, when you speak those words, I believed in it, but mm. it was, you know, it's not necessary that it was like a clear cut, okay, just follow these steps to get yeah. back where you want to get to. So I dreamt of this moment again, and I knew what I was working towards, um, but I knew that it wasn't going to be like a just A to B, come back here. Um, so I just try to like make small steps every time, hoping to see how far I can get. And obviously, um, this was the, the the final goal. Obviously, I'm hoping still mm. to push on, but yeah. I, I didn't necessarily really think, okay, this could be something that I could achieve again. So I just wanted to, mm. you know, see how far I could push the boat on myself. And um, yeah, that's kind of what, what was brought me back here. When you got when you got back to the Premier League, like, how did you feel? It was a strange moment. I think. It was even more so because when I came back to England finally, which was this time last year, um, it'd been like a weird year because COVID, everything that had been yeah. happening going on, transfer window was late um, and I came back to Watford and they, they already started the championship season and I kind of came here to be part of that project of getting promoted again. So uh, there was no guarantees of like, oh, when you yeah. sign somewhere, hold the shirt up, like I made it back to the Prem now. I was like, okay, I'm back in England now, but I still have this this yeah. this step to go so um I, I felt like it was like an amazing moment we played against Millwall was one of the last games of the season when we actually got the points to get promoted uh we played rubbish as well so it was that we scored early is Massar he was the man he's been the, he was the man all season in the champ really mm -hmm. and this year as well he's been very good so uh yeah he scored early for us and then I think we were all just like trying to hang on to okay. to that one nil <laughs> and Mill will start popping us off the park and we playing at home as well but it was all irrelevant. We just knew that we had to try and get this over the line. Okay. So when the final whistle went, it was like an emotional moment because I knew how much that meant to me and my family and all the people that had been on the journey with me and also to the team because I felt there was a lot of players in that team who wanted to achieve the same thing. So it was nice to be able to share that with, with other people yeah. and you really work towards it and That's people sick. could see the work towards it and not just like, oh, I've signed here now, they've paid this money or whatever, and I'm here, mm. uh, and you know, on the back of what I'd done maybe at my previous club. So it was even, it felt even more special just like making that next last step with Watford, if you know what I mean. That's yeah. it. And I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna get into your journey about, um, your, that your journey when you, all the different countries you played in, but before I get into that, it's like, Watford obviously, it, be, it had become, it had started becoming an established Premier League club, you know what I mean? Um, I think you guys done six years in, in, in the Prem and then it was like a little blip where you got relegated to the champ and then the, 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 the first opportunity you've gone back to the Prem. So credit to, the, to, to, to you, credit to the new signings that just aided that, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that was like one of the biggest things for me with the projects that when I saw the team and I saw the players, I was like, these are, for me, Premier League quality yeah. players. Yeah. And, and when I spoke to the president at the time, when he phoned me up and said, I want to bring you here to Watford, the first question I asked him was, OK, who, who's going to be part of that team? Who's going to be part of that project? And he was like, yeah, we're not trying to sell anyone, really. We, we obviously have some players who are either have to come with a wage bill uh, or maybe a little bit older that have been part of the season yeah. when they got down, maybe. So 
that he, but he wanted to keep everyone who was hungry and, and ready to get that promotion again there. So when I saw the team and I knew what, what they could do, I, I believed in that. So that kind of made it easy. And like you said, it, yeah. Watford is an established yeah. Premier League team, really, yeah. that got relegated. Yeah. That kind of made it easier to make that decision because I think if it would have been any other championship team that would have just been in the championship for a long time before without yeah. any you know disrespect i wouldn't have left Serie yeah. to come to england yeah, to try yeah, and do yeah, that yeah. project you know so was, it, was was the season because you mentioned you've got premier league quality players would you say the season was easier if that's the right word not easier but you've got them players was, was you rocking up to games knowing you was going to win funnily enough not at all i think it was until after christmas um we had a, a different manager before who played a little bit more defensively, we played 3-5-2 and it was, uh, yeah, we were turning up to games and people were matching us because all of a sudden we're defending and we're playing long balls and you realise that for some teams this is what they're really good at. Yeah. So we had to try and change the game to like play football and suit, you know, and actually show the quality that we had. So then we got Cisco Munoz, who was a Spanish manager who started playing 4-3-3 with us. And uh, yeah, we really focused on, you know, playing our style of football regardless of who we were playing against. And that's when our season kind of took a turn. I think we won 11 games in a row. And then all of a sudden we start looking up at, you know, who was in front of us because Brentford and Norwich were running away at the time with, a, with, um, with yeah. promotion spots. So, um, yeah, kind of that was the biggest turn. So it wasn't easy at all. And we definitely had moments, you know, the start of the season when everyone was looking at each other like, oh, guys, we don't want to be the team who's got all the names no, and, yeah. and doesn't yeah, do it because yeah. that's even more, you know, you know, it'll probably be more hurtful when you get to the end of the, you know, the season. So... Thankfully, we managed to have like a moment like that during the season where we could change it around and uh, we did that. Um, and then I think when we actually showed what we could do and, and played the football that we can play, yeah, then I feel like a lot of the games probably we were better than, than most of the teams we played against, yeah. Touching on what, what Fem said, like going back, so what made you make that transition to go all to all these different countries, Belgium, <coughs> Turkey, um, Italy, what, what, yeah. what made you make them decisions, especially leaving? Did you miss any out? Uh, yeah, my first, Germany? No, my first one back was Holland, so Holland, Holland, I'm yeah. half Dutch, half Nigerian, I was born in Holland, so Jeez. at the time... I Alice good? <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey. Dutch, wait, yeah. wait, 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 say that again? Alice good? Hey, he played, in, he played in Holland, you know, with some respect, this is the way you know. <laughs> hey, you know what, I'm going to bring up every episode here, yeah, <laughs> let these people know that you played abroad. No, nah, I know, <laughs> in Venlo, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Um, so, um... Yeah, you know, for me, it was, a, it was a logical step because I played under-19, under-20 football with the Dutch national team when I was at Spurs in the under-18s and the reserve team. So in Holland, I had some kind of respect in the sense that people knew you were a national team player. So when I came and left Spurs, I, I went on trial to Groningen at the time and that was like, my easiest way in and that was the most logical step to like come back to my home, really. What division was that? Uh, they were in the top division. Okay. And... Um, Funny enough, it was Van Dijk who just got sold to Celtic oh, okay. and they wanted to get... I was definitely not his replacement. I don't want to say it like that. Oh, so you're Van Dijk? No, 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 no. Van Dijk in the building! <laughs> I was definitely not his replacement, but I was a, I was a young player, 20 at the time, who yeah. was going to be understudy for some of the boys that are already there who were going to fill his shoes. So, um, yeah, and then that was kind of my, my, my step back to, to Holland. Didn't actually make to break, didn't manage to break into the first team. Uh, I remember my first game, I got subbed at half time, started throwing my boots around, yeah, started shouting at the manager, yeah, it was horrible. Um, and yeah, that was like another reality check for me because I feel like when you leave academy football and you're somewhere like a big team, you mm. kind of think, oh, I'm going to turn up somewhere and play football, you know? So that was a good reality check for me. And then I went alone to a second division team in Holland, Dordrecht, it's called, and then we got promoted with that team and I stayed there another okay. season and played like, well, that was my first season playing regular first team football, yeah. and um, yeah, that's kind of like was like my kickstart of, of my of my of my career really. Mm. And then afterwards, I went on to um, Norway, Belgium, uh, <laughs> Turkey. Like, I just did one season in each league and like managed to just play full season, level up, play full uh, season, level uh, up. When when, when did it. when did when did you start thinking, okay, progress is being made? Like, at what point was? That? Um, you know, just the regular football. Like, that was the main thing I, was, I could see in myself playing week in, week out. I was improving because if I look back at games of myself now, I'm like watching and like, oh my God, what was I doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's just like a natural process as any player because I think especially as a centre-back, I still make mistakes all the time now, but it's, 
you have some experience like now you, you know how to prepare for an occasion prepare for opponents mm. i remember like the first games that i played i could never sleep at night because i was nervous about yeah. playing and now like thank god i could turn up to a game and as soon as the whistle goes like i'm just doing my job yeah. so that's experience you can't teach that on the training pitch mm -hmm. like you get that by playing and obviously you'll yeah. know that everyone yeah. who's played for a while um so that's the kind of thing that i just needed so it was just like game by game i realized i was improving 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 and um, yeah, I think that was really what made me realise, OK, that was like the key thing that I needed really to make those mm. mistakes and still, you know, get trusted by a manager to to play. So, do you know what? I'm so I'm happy you're here. Mm. Do you know why? Yeah. I always preach. Yeah. If you're going to go abroad, what do I always say? Make it work. Yeah. Make it work. Mm. Be yeah. successful abroad. Now we've got a, Let's give this guy a round of applause. Honestly, 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 we say this all the time here. If you're going to go abroad, be successful abroad. Go and make it work. Make sure there's an angle. Make sure you come back right. in the Premier League or make sure you go abroad and you're doing your thing abroad. You know what I mean? And you're just a testament to that. So, my bro, shake my hand. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> so, in, in terms of like, um, you mentioned earlier that half Dutch, half Nigerian. Yeah. So, how did playing for Nigeria come about? So I was playing in, in Holland. This was the, the season I was playing in Dordrecht, the second division team that got promoted. Played a full season in the, in the top league in Holland. And um, yeah, we played one against one all over the pitch, like man mark your striker. So it was that, for me, it was that do or die. If I slip yeah. once, go on. Yeah, yeah. Or like if someone did a bit, go on. <coughs> So it was great because I think it exposed my, my obviously, the things I wasn't good at, mm -hmm. my weaknesses, and it also showed what I was really good at. And um, Luckily enough, we played one game and I just I was having like a, a monster of a game and there was someone there watching. We had some Nigerian team uh, players as well playing for Nakbreda at the time. And um, they informed Stephen Keshi, who was the coach at the time. So he gave me a call after the game and I was like, gobsmacked, they even had my number. I think he got it through someone that he knew in Holland. And uh, he was like, yeah, we'll listen. I would love for you to come. Mm. It was the end of the season for the June game. Um, would you be willing to come to play for Nigeria? So I was like, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, you know, you were one of my, my idols as a kid as a centre back and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it was it was like a quick decision because like when you get a chance to play for Nigeria, for me, what it year was, was like, that in? It was in 2015. Okay. Then yeah, and and he was you know I knew there was like a like a project restart of the team. Yep. Mm. Yep. Um, some of the older players were coming out. Yep. So I just, I smelled the opportunity and I was like, nah, this is for me, I want to do this. And um, okay. yeah, so then there was like, it was no, it was a no brainer really. And then uh, a few months later, he actually called me up. I was just happy to be in the camp, just happy to be there. And then training, 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 playing against like Igalo, some of the like, players that I'd yeah. only seen on TV before. And then all of a sudden on the match day, I was like, ah, oh, it looks like I'm going to play, you know? So yeah. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Then we ended up winning the game 2-0 and then uh, yeah, the rest was history really. I remember you came to the training camp in London as well. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Pem was if, waiting if, for if, it. If, 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 if the yeah, yeah, answer, listen, no, listen, Pem went, what year was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, was I, was I was there. I was there the same year. I remember him emerging and I can't lie to you, that's a problem in my career. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'll talk that thing to the end, but I'm like, you get me. But yeah, I remember, I remember, I remember seeing you there. That's the first time I ever saw you. And I was like, okay, yeah, good, solid. Like, And I remember you were playing in um, was it Turkey? Um, you just moved to Turkey. I think I was either in Belgium moving to Turkey okay. or, or I was still in Turkey. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. So I remember that. That's yeah. good. Um, but what was your? Did you you see before you got the call up? Did you have a connection to to Nigeria prior to yeah. the call up? Or yeah, I think this is the biggest thing that people don't necessarily know yeah. about me. So. My dad always lived in Lagos when I was a kid, mm. and um, he studied in Holland, that's where he met my mum. Yeah. Couldn't get, find work at the time in the 80s, I think it was difficult at the time as well, you know, with racism, racism mm. a lot of things that were going on. Um, and then I spent almost all my half terms, Christmas holidays, summer holidays in Nigeria. That was like, I didn't go on holiday anywhere else. It was like, I'm going to mm. my dad's place in Nigeria, yeah, yeah. Mm. So for me, Nigeria was nothing new. You know, sometimes mm. I see some players that now choose to play for Nigeria, which is their, you know, God-given right, and I'm happy when they do it. And then the first game they land in Lagos Airport, they're like, yo, what, you know, Will, <laughs> what's going what on are we here? doing now? Yeah, 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 what am I supposed to do? And for me, it was never like that. So that, for me, nothing was new. The food was the same, you know, the culture, the people, how to speak to people, the pidgin English, that was like all normal for me. 
it was just I'm there to play football now instead mm. of see family. So mm -hmm. I think that would make, also made it like a lot easier for me to make that decision because I didn't have to ring anyone to be like, oh yeah, what's the hotel like or what's this yeah. like or that like. So yeah, it that kind really of was... wasn't really a transition. No, it wasn't a big yeah. transition. It wasn't, it was it wasn't a big transition, yeah. It was normal. You're captain of Nigeria as well, aren't it? Yeah, so now yeah. obviously Amin Musa is still our official yeah. captain. Yeah. He played his hundred and first cap of a uh, yeah. of a game, so you know that's that's a legend. That's the yeah, legend I'm playing. Hundred, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, but I say probably like the last twenty games when he hasn't played, and yeah. I've been the captain. So, and, then, and you're also the captain of Watford. No, I'm not the captain oh. of Watford. I'm, I'm one of the captains, like oh, vice yeah. captains. Obviously, we had um, Tom Cleverley, uh, yeah. Troy Deeney, and then the last couple of games, Musa Sissoko has been the captain. So, yeah, yeah. I'm one of the players, you know, that yeah. if they want to give it to me, then I'm there. Um, but yeah. I'm not named like the, the captain. And, and you and you went to um, Watford a year ago, and you're already in that position. Um, and also, that's what leads me back to watching your documentary. Um, you're highly motivated. Mm. You're from watching that, it wasn't even a long clip, it was a short clip. Your work rate is second to none. Very, very professional. You know, um, conduct yourself well. Uh, Captain written all over it. You said something on your documentary early on, first one of the, one of the first lines, my, my coach said, I'm not going to be a footballer, I should find something else to do. Coach at Tottenham, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, what motivates you? Because you're proper. Uh, you know what? I think over the years, like the motivation has slightly changed. So when I was that age, my first motivation was just to get into academy football. When I was I was 15 at the time, 14, I trialled at Fulham. I remember seeing James there as well. He was a, a big, big talent at the time. <laughs> I dropped that one That's in there for you, bro. That's um, a good sign. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, you went to Stoke after, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I remember, I remember. So, for me, like that was like my biggest motivation as a schoolboy. I wanted to become like an academy player, like a, get a scholarship, whatever. Managed to do that, and um, I think that might have been like my biggest blessing. But also, I kind of like arrived thinking, okay, I've done something. I've done now. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I remember my youth team coach at the time reminding me all the time, like, take those earrings out, get your flashy boots off, blah 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 blah. And I was someone who was quite rebellious. I didn't like to hear that kind of stuff. So my attitude changed massively as well in those years when I was there from thinking I'd actually done something. Because obviously at my school, in my playground, I was yeah. the, the this kid problem, now. Yeah. Yeah. To arriving there and I was literally cleaning the boots of the first team. You know, you're no one really. And they like to remind you that. Um, and then I remember one time we had a meeting with my mum, I think it was after my first year as a scholar. And he was like, I'm going to be really honest with you uh, to my mum. Like, Will's miles off it. And um, at this rate, I can't see him playing even non-league football or like League Two. What, league what did one. that do for you? I felt like crying. And I remember seeing my mum, my mum was upset. Like I've, I've never really seen her like that because she kind of, well, she backed me against my dad's um, will to sign for Spurs at the time. Yeah. Because I came to England originally to go to school. I went to a boarding school, yeah. Bishop Stortford. So she, it was already like a big deal that she did that for me. Um, and then all of a sudden, after one year, she's hearing like, yeah, this is not really working out. So mm -hmm. that was like the biggest motivation from that moment on. I was like, no, Will, you need to, you know, sort yourself out. And, and that was like kind of the chip on my shoulder every time to be like, I'm going to show everyone, I'm going to show everyone, I'm going to show everyone, do, I'm going to show everyone. Do you still hear that in your head? Like, there's a, there's a boxer called Bern, Bernard Hopkins. Yeah. And his story, his story is, he went to jail. And the warden in jail used to say, you're going to be nothing, yeah. you're going to be this and came out, he boxed till, I'm talking 50 years old, professional, one of the best. And they asked him what motivation, he's like, the warden, the warden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's his thing. Does that, do you still hear that meeting? Does that still ring in your ear from time to time to keep you going or is it, um, or is it changed from that to something else now? Yeah, no, it's from something that to something else. That. Yeah. That's just an opinion, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, f I feel like everyone has their own thing that works yeah. for them. And I feel like you need to like unlock that that something inside you really. Yeah. You can see someone there fire in their eyes, you know, you know they're gonna do something. And and I think that started with me with my dad because he he also said to me, Yeah, you you're too late to make it to an academy, you're not gonna do it. He was trying to discourage me from a good way because he wanted me to focus on school. So I understand that now because I'm a you know, I'm a dad myself, so and I was very stubborn as a kid. So I understood his angle now, but back then I didn't. So that yeah. was like my first voice. Then I had my youth team coach, that was my second voice. And then afterwards, 
that kind of changed to almost like unhealthy because I was so, so like wanting to prove myself. So then when I get my first setback when I was in Holland and I got subbed at half time in my debut, which I yeah. worked for for 20 years, yeah. I was like besides myself. So I kind of needed to learn how to change that to stop wanting to prove myself to someone else to actually prove it to myself because it started becoming like almost like extra pressure on what I was trying to do instead of motivation. So 100%. I needed to get some help with that. I had a, I had a mental coach to help me with that who I still work with today. Mm. And that was a massive part of my next development, which kind of yeah. happened in the year leading up to the World Cup because I knew it was going to be a lot of pressure on me. I just made my first transfer for some money in Turkey and I didn't want that to like be like a burden over me. So yeah. I, I got some help with someone who really helped me with that. And then that, that really quickly changed because I realized every time I was reaching milestones, those people weren't going to come to say to me, oh yeah, well done, Will, you actually done yeah, it now. Yeah, yeah. So I did it all then. I managed you know, play at the world, world stage, you know, represent my country, play in the biggest leagues and still wasn't going to meet those people from back then who told me I couldn't do it. So mm. then I kind of realized like, why am I still chasing that almost like a well done from someone? Yeah. I need to, you know, focus Within on myself. Yourself. Yeah. So that kind of was like the biggest next step for me. And uh, yeah, no, I just tried to like use that as a positive energy. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy those things happened to me, even yeah. though they weren't nice, but yeah. they brought me where I am today. So, um, yeah. How, how important, you mentioned something there, how important would you say your mental has to be in football? For me, it's the biggest thing. Because when I was 15, I wasn't the best player. I was definitely, if you ask Jack Mans, you probably say I was probably the worst player in the, in the youth team at the time. Mm, Couldn't really get in the team. We didn't really get into that. Ask him next time you see him. So like, you, did say, you did say you got you, you got a third year. You didn't get a yeah, pro. You got yeah, a I didn't get pro. I got yeah. a third year because it wasn't that like, sure. The main thing that I knew over me that I could be with anyone and I knew that if it came down to it, I wanted it more to them. And, mm. and, and even now, like I said, like, I can sense it sometimes when they play against player. When I feel like I've got that over them, then it doesn't really come down to ability. Of course, you meet some players sometimes that can really do something special at the ball, or do something, you know, you know that they have more class, whatever. But when it's like a 50-50, all the things that I knew that, okay, this is going to be my bread and butter. I need to make sure that I'm the hardest working in the gym, make sure I'm the fittest, mm-hmm. I can run the most. If, it's, if I'm going to, you know, if it's going to be a ball dropping between me and you, it's going to be my ball, that kind of stuff. So just like the basic things, that helped me really focus on that. And I feel like when I see players now, and I see great talents all the time, young players, when they don't have that fire, yeah, that kind of makes me really like question, are they gonna actually gonna make it to the next level, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I always say, I would rather be that person you're talking about than be someone with a whole heap of ability, but don't have that because at least that will take you somewhere. You know what I mean? we always banned about how we wasn't good at football and stuff, yeah. 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 But we always had that, and it, at least it, it took us somewhere, innit? That, that, I mean? that is for me, yeah. the longevity and anything. Yeah. You know? Even if it's a football or anything, you need that resilience. You know that's I mean? it, so, that's it. That's true, yeah. man. That's true. You mentioned also um, uh, the World Cup you played in. Um, just talk a little bit about that experience. Yeah, so um, that was... Probably my my career highlight to date. Um, yeah, it was just amazing. Like the whole lead up to that, qualifying for that as well, um, and just like sharing the pitch with you know some amazing players: John Obi Mikel, uh, Victor Moses, Amin Musa. Like these are Alex Iwobi, all the kids that now have grown to be my teammates, my friends. They were all like my footballer like idols. You know what I mean? Especially the the older generation ones that I mentioned. So. To be and share that stage with them and, and, and realise that the whole world is watching those games was like an amazing experience. And um, yeah, like ups and downs, because like, I don't just want to say is it was all good because it wasn't the first game. I gave away a penalty, we end up losing the game. Like imagine that, like if you're underneath like a, <laughs> like a loop, everybody yeah, sees that. Yeah, so having yeah. to deal with that, um, I felt like I was finally mentally ready for that moment because yeah. I prepared with my mental coach as well for those kind of things. To then have a game three, four days later against Iceland that we had to win. And then Amin Musa came out with the magic and he scored those two amazing yeah. goals. And then um, the Argentina game that I still can't watch back to this day, you know, when they mm. scored in the yeah. 86th minute, I think it was Rojo. You can't watch it back? No, I can't watch it back. Like, it still makes me emotional. So, um, yeah, no, it's like, it was amazing. Like, looking back at it now, 
I don't like saying, oh, that was even losing that game against Argentina was special, but it is because it, it you know, it's, it's, a, it's a lifetime memory, <laughs> lifetime moment. And if I, you know, could do it again, I wish obviously I did better. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like it's kind of like a beauty in that struggle and those yeah. things that happen as well. So that's my motivation now to hopefully qualify for the next one. And yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to win the next again. World Cup. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna win. that's what I'm saying as well. Nigeria, so win that just, one. Um, I overheard you when you were speaking to um, someone off camera. You said you was talking about some of the players you played against as well, some of the big players in that. Yeah. And um, out of the big players, you said um, someone was the best. Yeah. I'd just like you to, if you can say that again. Ah, uh, we're gonna I'm gonna start something here. No, 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 yeah. Why would you say Messi? What did he do in the game that you'd say? Yeah, he scored he scored against us at the World Cup, you know, when he that was like a that goal. That goal was, was crazy. I can still close my eyes and see that in slow motion. So yeah, I've been lucky to play against um I think all of the big ones almost. I think um just mess, missing probably Pogba and Mbappe. I'll say those are the ones at this moment. Haaland, uh, but the rest that like Neymar, Messi, Ronaldo, Slatan, like all those players are top top players, Harry Kane. Uh, but Messi was something different. Like, it just when he was the first, maybe 15 minutes of the game, he was just walking around, just like watching what's happening. And then afterwards, when he turned it on, he was like, "You can't, you can't do anything. You just watch." Well, Joby said the same thing. Yeah, he'll, said, be, even he'll Bukes, be walking. Said the same but, thing. Says the same thing. but I'm gonna have to say, obviously, <laughs> I'm saying this with all due respect to to Ronaldo. Uh, you might be watching this Ronaldo when I'm playing against you, United. Oh, but I hope he is. All, all the, all the <laughs> 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 not because of you, though. That came out really <laughs> <too. laughs> no, 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 not because of me. <laughs> yeah, no, he's watching. <laughs> he might be watching this series. That came across wrong, bro. That came across wrong. Yeah, that's what I said as well, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, no, so obviously all those players are, they're great, you know what I mean? So, our uh, Messi was something different. I can't lie to you. Sorry, Medi, yeah. Yeah, 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 Messi, boo, boo, boo. Zlatan, yeah, bro. Man said Zlatan. Do you know who's Zlatan is to me? What was that one like, bro? Yeah, no, it was difficult, obviously. In Milan, Zlatan? Yeah. And he's, he's a real presence, you know. Yeah, but, man. Now, I enjoyed that one, but he, you know, you can see all the quality, what yeah. he can do, the physicality, but he didn't have that, like, I, I hate to say it, man, because I'm talking about like a great player, but yeah. the magic, magic that. On Messi the day, had, we're talking yeah. about on the day, man. We're talking yeah. about on the day. On the day, then for me, Messi, Messi was something different. Yeah, and on the day, Zlatan didn't have the. Yeah, he still was good, but he wasn't that. Yeah. That, yeah. No, I feel you, I feel you, I feel you. What was, um, what was, um, Liverpool like last week because you lot got a good result obviously just yeah, thinking Josh yeah. Kinky come up with the magic yeah yeah but what was Liverpool like how was that like bounce back ability because you lot lost yeah like hefty yeah yeah no, that's cool man. Goes, man, that's five good. as well so it's, like, not, it's, it's not, that's that's the reality yeah. of football and I feel like anyone watching this like they need to know that as well so and, yeah we're hurt man obviously losing 5-0 Premier League everybody's watching 12-30 game on, on the Sunday or Saturday wherever it was yeah, it's never nice, and they and they played us at the park. And and one thing that I'd have to say is that we weren't good enough as well. They were a different class, and they probably would have still won the game if they would have, you know, matched us when we were playing the top top, you know, our best level. But I think we were probably felt disappointed looking back at that game that we didn't really provide that resilience that we wanted to do. So I think that's probably the most painful thing when you lose a certain way. It's never nice, but yeah, Liverpool looked different class. I think you club club played, side. You played their rivals. Um, yeah, Josh King had a bit of yeah, he turned it up. Teeth, yeah, 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 and I think that's Old the beauty of it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like when you, angry, when you play one of those games, I knew that we were all burnt to do something because mm. there's no good talking about uh, how good Liverpool were. And when you see on Sky Sports, you have to watch it in the canteen every day. Salah doing the slow motion stuff, you know what I mean? So yeah, that goal was like FIFA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But with all of us in, in that's the thing everybody likes to remind you about. It, so you know that we, the only way you can kind of redeem yourself is doing on the pitch so mm. that, Liv that um, Everton game was good for us but again like we have a game against Southampton on Saturday like people want to see can we do it that's again, it. again you know yeah. what I mean so that's, that's, that's this year is all about mm. performing again and again and again mm. so what did, did you um, message Alex anything uh, I spoke to him after the game mm -hmm. yeah he was disappointed as well I'm yeah. not gonna lie so uh, yeah. Um, yeah you know what side topic yeah if you know our managers yeah oh, this for all three of you yeah and you got a player that used to play for a team and you come up against that team. Would you play that player? 
Yeah. Mm. But it depends like, on... Because you know some managers don't. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? No, but it depends on, like, if the player's been doing well in training that week, how he's you think? going. Yeah. You can't just play a player just because it was his old team. Don't you feel like, mentally, they're going to be... Up for it. So just yeah. throw him in there? No. What do you think? Like, work like that. I think you don't think it works like that? No, it shouldn't no. work like that. I think it's a combination. I think obviously they have, they have to earn the right to play. Yeah, they have week. to. And obviously, play. I think it will also look weird for the rest of the team because players, I mean, in, in the team you talk as well, you, everyone can see the same thing. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it will be great motivation. I think Josh King was like epitomised. Yeah. yeah, and, that's and what also, saying, but, like, and also like, that could happen. If, if Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but <laughs> also if you throw him in for one game, that says a lot about that player. So you're only trying because it was your old team. You can't just play someone because of that. Oh no! As a manager, and you want to get the win, that that could be just be a play, <coughs> just be like a chess move. Mm. But there the you other go. side, your team. Some managers <laughs> players get too emotional. I'm not, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying yeah, and they can get sent off. You're right. And I, I mean, that's the that. other side. Of no, I'm just saying. I'm just. It's just a general chit I'm not saying what's right. I'm not saying what's wrong yeah. in it. But like, nah, it just it just got me thinking. Like, raw. Like, Josh King scored a hat trick against his old team. He had that fire in his. He had that dog in him. Like, yeah. you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you saw what I meant yeah. when the celebrations. Like, yeah, you, you get me. But um, obviously, like you're in the Premier League, and you just spoke about um, the like, seeing the Salah go on TV all over the place. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what it's like in other countries, but I know in the Premier League, anything you do is under like a microscope, isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? Anything yeah. like highlights. highlights yeah. The game. Boom, 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 boom. Did you have to adjust to that coming back, or has it always been like that, like playing? Um, I feel like every time I moved up the league, it kind of like intensified a bit, but the Premier League's been like different because all the places I played before, all those countries, people are watching what I'm doing here now. So that already was like a like a moment for me where I realised that, like, wow, everyone is watching. Everyone's the watching. Yeah, yeah. so um, yeah, man. Like, and then most of the time is when you play against a big team as well. So yeah. that's it's always difficult to uh, to uh, to show yourself in that, but you give yourself, you know, the best opportunity to play well. But um, yeah, I definitely think that the Premier League is the most watched and that's also what is the yeah. beauty of it and that's why everybody loves playing here watching it because every game is interesting even you know your Norwich Watford mm. yeah, all those games for me are interesting as a fan like all these years before this I watched all those games because I just love watching the Prem yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. I wanted to ask as a defender um, like when you come up against strikers do you study them as like you know like boxers when they study their opon opponents or do you just watch Normal football games, and you see how they play, or do you, people send you videos of that? Like, this is a movement, and yeah, whatnot. yeah. So I, I've, how come I, you haven't asked me that before? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can tell him after don't what get, you do. Don't then. get started. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, we'll just well, ask. We so don't, don't ask me that We don't ask me. No, no, All right, go on, we'll, go on, we'll deliberate me. Go on, we'll answer the question, bro. No, you, you can answer it after. I'll let you go no, first. No, 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 no. What, do you, what do you do, bro? I'm not answering, man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take, take it, take uh. it. They don't, want, they don't want to know my answer. Go on, bro. Yeah, is that what you did? All right. So, um, yeah, no, we do. We watch clips, yeah. obviously. Mm. And, um, yeah, I, I work with a video analysis, any, an analysis anyway because I, I kind of watch my old games. And then we also like preview, get who we're playing against, mm. just to get like Top an idea. Pro, but pro. on the other side, like you can watch as many clips as you want because like I feel like in the Prem, a lot of the strikers they've got flair, they've got unpredictability, you know what I mean? Mm. So you can kind of see what they've liked to do, um, but that doesn't necessarily prepare you for like, okay, this definitely gonna happen this game, mm. you know? Hey, we're gonna play a little game, will yeah? Yeah. Uh, it's called Quick Fire Round, yeah? So we're gonna ask you some questions. And I wanna know. Your answers, you get me. Right. Um, do you know what? Do you know what? What a deep breath for that. Do you know what? Do you know what, Medi? I'm trying to think. What is he going to ask me now? Yeah. Do you know what, Medi? I'm going to send these questions over to you. Yeah. I don't want you to do it. First question. Yeah. Favorite ground you've played at? Uh, Old Trafford. Oh, come on. <laughs> 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 uh, I think I'm on. I think I'm on. I didn't even mean to do that. Um, best club you played for? Uh, Watford. Oh, let's touch on that. So, is that the best you've played? 
like your best best version of yourself like um i think my best season best so far probably be my first season at udinese so first hopefully season. this season is gonna better that oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. okay 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 uh, um Best player you played Skip against? Skip that one, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there's two. You might as well skip the next one as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll skip favorite, that one. favorite teammate. Favorite teammate. Cause wait, is that Watford or yeah, exactly. the national team or both? No, like, no, no. Favorite teammate ever. Or best ever team. Ever. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, probably say Bram Knighting is a defender, Dutch guy. I played at Udinese. We played mm. my first season together. And, yeah. yeah you had the Connection. Shit, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's your he's your best um, teammate at Watford. Best teammate, best teammate, best teammate. Oh, that's a difficult one, you know. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> 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 no, 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 best player I'm going to have to give it is my son. Yeah. Yeah, oh, uh, cool. Um, all right, cool. We're skipping the Ronaldo Messi thing, yeah. Yeah, we know the answer. Yeah, yeah we know the done. answer. Yeah. All right, cool. First thing you bought over £500 for yourself when you turned pro? Um, I think it was one of those those ice watches. Those were, I don't know if you remember those. Ice watch. Ice watch. Ice watch. Yeah, it was I remember back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like a hot thing. Yeah. Most most expensive item. But uh, is that a watch? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. It's blinding my eye right now, man. <laughs> Heck, Lee. Um, house probably. Okay. Um, ah, right, cool. Gucci or Louis? Louis Vuitton. Ooh. <laughs> that's easy. Yeah, though. Said quick, For me, you know? that's easy. Is it? Yeah. yeah. No, but Gucci been bringing out some things like nah, Louis. Come on. Louis. What's your fast, favorite? What's your favorite brand? Favorite brand uh, right now? Please say uh, Rick Owens. Oh. Okay, we understand that. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Ricky. Um, um, <laughs> hey, Ricky. Favorite. Shout out to me, Ricky. Ricky, give me a shout out. That's right. Give me a shout out. Ricky, come on. Favorite watch. Um, my favorite watch all time. Oh, you, yeah, is favorite, that, favorite watch uh, all time. Yeah, favorite watch all time. I'll probably say uh, Nautilus Patek. Yeah. Oh, good Yay. choice. Yay. Uh, good choice. Big Philip. Good choice. Mm. Philip. What's uh, your uh, favorite watch though in your collection? Nah, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> 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 This one probably, yeah, it's not even real in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, uh, proudest... Oh, okay, <laughs> we got you, man. Yeah. Hey, hey, Manny, go get them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, you, you should have people start looking where uh, you live in there. Don't worry, yeah. man, you're protected in there, um, trust me. The proudest moment in your career? Uh, playing the World Cup. Playing the World Cup. Yeah. i got one more. Favourite dish? Mm. That's a tough one, you know. Egg whiskey soup, pound of jam. Wow! Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You gotta slap it first. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. Before, before, before you pick it up, yeah, slap it up. You know that one? No, but listen, yeah. um, going on to we're talking about brands and stuff, it's a femme. <laughs> you like the look in it? Yeah, this is like all black. Like, what's going on here? Um, well, yeah, it's just another, you know, but you know, I like my all black, mm -hmm. you know, I like wearing, I like wearing black, black, black on black, so, but this one here is all right, man, Michi, man. I so see it and I thought, yeah, man. Mm. You got it? Yeah, it's all right still. It's a nice little set, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not going to lie, I need, I need to set myself Appreciate because, it, yeah, but it's looking, it's looking good. No, it's good, man, it's good. But the man that are looking, I like your Gile, you come looking suave <laughs> as well, you know. Will, Will, if, if, if I was to say your top five Ooh. best dressed footballers from what you've seen, mm, from what I've seen, what would you give your top five to? Because we've had other yeah. players come on and they've said their they top said, five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going to give you any names. We need your top yeah, five. Yeah, my own. Okay, I'll go off people that I know. Okay. Because I think that is that is the easiest way because I see them every day. So, because I don't think you can just judge a drip on one, one. day Instagram out picture. moment on Instagram mm -hmm. because oh, cool. Instagram is highlights, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's that's the real the reality of it. So, um, probably say Tom Delibashiru 
special. It's, it's a young, young. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that guy. Yeah, yeah, young Watford player. Yeah, yeah he's on loan he's at on Reading loan. now. Yeah, Reading. Yeah, he's, he's good. a good dresser. Yeah. And how he dressed on Instagram, that's how he dresses every day. Mm-hmm. So they, you know, that's the level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Josh King. Good. He's good yeah, yeah, the hat trick man. Yeah, he's got a bit. He's, he's got he, a bit. he wants to convince me he hasn't got a stylist, but I think he's got. Oh, a yeah. <laughs> see, but see, but then Will's that's cheating. Then yeah, see the stylist is, thing. Yeah. I don't know if I can mess with it. Don't get you me know, wrong. some some players they start with a stylist and then they just uh, okay, carry on. Copy, so, copy it. but I know that that started from somewhere. That uh, wasn't his it's own not thing. just him. No, though. no, no. Um, Philip Sinkenagel is a player from Watford as well on loan at Nottingham Forest. And I love it because he just wears what he, he likes. Mm. So he's the one who wears that weird stuff, but he loves it. So he just he rocks knows how it. to drop yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then everyone's like, what are you wearing? And then two weeks later, you see someone else like, oh, where'd you get that from? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I get you, I get you. Um, so what's that? I've got three already. Two, two left. Two left. Mm. Uh, we've got a new player, Nicholas Nkulu. He's a sign for Watford centre-back. I've seen him on Ola's Aina Snapchat. I don't know if you've seen him before on Torino. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, we yeah, signed. Oh, but nice. he wears crazy he stuff. He wears crazy stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but he's got, he's got, he's got, he's got uh, where's he from? He's Cameroon, from Cameroon. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because he's got the Congo drip slash like, yeah. African yeah, yeah, drip. Yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 see him on Ola's Snapchat every day. But before you say this fifth one, yeah, you played in Holland, bro. Bro, yeah, like, Holland are drippiest. they are the drippiest, they bro. Are Why are you not naming all, you're just naming Bear Watford, man? Like. Yeah, because I'm saying about <laughs> players that I played with. When I, when I was in Holland, the team that I was playing for, we weren't... <laughs> another, we didn't know drip, you know what I mean? So, you know, we, we was, everyone was getting started. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I think But I think you used to see man out there, like... Yeah, no, you did, you did, you did, you did. Think like, Oh, yeah, you did, you did. But there's one thing for me, like buying a lot of designers isn't drip. On mm. mm. So, I mean, I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Capitino, Capitino. Did you from head to toe? It's not drip. It's not, it's not, it's not. <laughs> like, it looks good. Yeah. It looks good, but for me, then I wouldn't be your style. I mean, you can buy a catalogue and you yeah. can look like a runway thing, but mm-hmm. that's not, for me, that isn't necessarily yeah, style. So, uh, so I've seen a lot of players that do that a lot and they look yeah. good. Um, I'm gonna say who's a bit out there. Number five. Right, you know, I'll drop. I'll probably say. I'll probably say Memphis the Pie. I know he's got a bit of drip yeah. in there, but he also does very clean stuff. Yeah, and he clean. does his own mm, thing. Mm, mm, so I rate that. So it's not just just designer stuff everywhere. You know what? This guy, the real captain. He just named all the Watford players. Yeah, all <laughs> the players on the team. Really? Yeah. Really no, that's well, really thank you. Yeah, thank you. Like, of him, I just thought, bro, right, this guy's a serious leader. He's a serious guy. Yeah, no. Straight yeah. away. You know no ones. Now, William, that was no, unbelievable. Was proper, and unbelievable. You coming on. Thanks, guys. Thank